So this should be a short video, but we need this to be able to do something called critical path analysis. So we need to look at weighted precedence tables and float times. So first of all, we're going to need a network, and this is the activity network that we're going to use. So how does it work? Well, you can do A and B, you can start off with those, then you can do C and D. Now, you can't start F until C is done, that's what that dummy activity is there for. Uh, you can start doing E as soon as C is done, uh, and then G, and then H, and then you're finished. Now, I'm going to create what's called a weighted precedence, uh, oh, sorry, a weighted activity network. Okay, weighted activity network. Now, what does this say? Well, it takes eight units of time, eight minutes, eight hours, whatever it is to do A, but it only takes six units of time, six minutes, let's go with minutes, to do B. And then it takes two minutes to do D, one minute to do F, two minutes to do G, one minute to do three minutes and one minute. So that's what we mean by a weighted activity network. Now we're going to create a precedence table. So you should be familiar with these, but I've put another extra uh, column in the middle. Now that column is going to count for something called duration. All right, I'm going to ignore that middle column for a second. I'm just going to finish doing my immediate predecessors. So A and B are at the start, so they have no immediate predecessors. C has an immediate predecessor of A. Uh, D has an immediate predecessor of B. Uh, e has an immediate predecessor of C. F, you need to be careful with has an immediate predecessor of D, but the dummy network shows, dummy uh, activity also shows that it has a predecessor of C, so that's C and D. G has uh, two predecessors, E and F, and G has, uh, H has a predecessor of uh, G. And we're finished. And now I'm just gonna fill out this duration column. So A takes A, B takes six, C takes one, D takes two, F takes 1, E takes 3, G takes 2, and H takes 1. Okay, so what have I done so far? I've looked at what's called a weighted activity network, which is just like the other activity networks we've done, but now we have durations for each of our activities. And now I've created what's called a weighted precedence table uh, with this duration column in the middle. Uh, now, I promised you we'd also talk about float times, so let's talk about float times. Now, to talk about float times, I'm going to draw your attention to this part here. E and F are the important things that I want to talk about. Now, E and F are predecessors to G, right? So that means that I can't start doing G until E and F are complete. Now, I can't start doing E and F until D and C are complete, right? So the moment that C is complete, which is nine hours into the project or nine minutes into the project, I can start doing E and F at the same time. But look at E and F. E takes three minutes to do. F only takes one minute to do. Now imagine that you've got two people. One person is doing job E and one person is doing job F. Now, the minute that C gets finished, E should start working, right? Because they've got a big job to do. It's going to take them three minutes to do. F can choose. F can say, you know what? My job only takes a minute, so I can relax for two minutes. And when two minutes goes off on my alarm, I'll start doing my job because it'll take me one minute to get my job done, and then G can get started just as E finishes. That two minutes is what our float time is. Now, we can draw it a little bit differently to that. If I put E and F in this little table here, I can illustrate this float time really easily because uh, this is one minute, this is two minutes, and this is three minutes, and that's all of the time that it's going to take to do E's job, right? Whereas F is only going to need to work for one minute but so that G can get started. So F has choices. F can say, you know what, I'm going to get stuck in and I'm going to finish early. So the moment that C and D are done, F is going to start here. And then we call this slack time or float time. F has two minutes of float time and they're going to choose to use that float time right there. But of course F could also say, you know what, I'm just going to chill out here for a minute and then I'll get stuck in and then 
I'll get, and then I'll have another minute of rest. Float or slack, work, and then some slack. And of course, I think you can see where I'm going with this. F could also choose to really procrastinate and say, you know what, I'm just going to chill out, I'm just going to chill out, and then, right at the end, I'm going to work. So this is the procrastinator. So that slack time or that float time gives whoever's doing F or the activity F options. Should we start early? Should we start late? Should we do some work in the middle? That's what we mean by float time. That's all I wanted to cover for this video. We really get stuck into what's called critical path analysis in our next video. So just make sure that you understand that this is an activity network, but now with times, which we call a weighted uh, activity network. This is a weighted precedence table, and we should start being able to analyze our network a little bit and start talking about float times. How much slack or how much float does a particular activity have? And when should we start it or when's the latest or the earliest we should start it?